What is up, YouTube? It's Ed here, back again with another The Last of Us review of episode four. Four. Uh, <laughs> um, and it was a pretty good episode. Um, you know, it basically sets up, I guess, the next little arc, so to say, in the series. Because, you know, the first kind of story arc was about getting Ellie out and then kind of like a um, kind of like a setting up of like how they're going to, you know, get stuff or how they got stuff and just kind of the beginning of the, there's no real, you know, the first conflict, so to say. Well, now we're going into the second conflict where Joel and Ellie go into um, a new town or a new city where it's controlled by these raiders and um, they've basically taken out the Fedra that's in there. Um, the QZ that was there is, you know, basically gone. Uh, not sure if it's because of infection or if it's because of them. You know, uh, they don't really say that. But uh, I think, I mean, obviously all these characters are in the video game. I've never played a video game again, so I have no idea how accurate these people are. But in terms of what happens in this episode, I think it does a really great job of like, setting up the character between Ellie and Joel and how Ellie is kind of like breaking down all the barriers that Joel has. Cause you know, he was super cold. All he, I mean, he really just wanted to shoot her and get it over with in the beginning. Cause like all he cares about is his brother and Ellie is just basically baggage to him. Right. So, you know, he didn't want any part of that, but now that, you know, Tess is gone and he made a promise to Tess, he is going to, you know, fulfill that promise but and over time you can tell like you know ellie is breaking like you know it's definitely trying to get to know joe a little bit more um and also just trying to uh get him to be a little bit more human and i think we see how joel is like slowly just like okay coming back to i guess is like you know getting out of his hardened skin because obviously you know he in some shape or form, I'm sure Ellie reminds him of his daughter. Um, and, you know, he, he's like, well, like, I, I don't want to form a bond with you because in the chance that you get killed, because in this world, you probably will get killed. Like, I don't want to like, go through that emotional toil again. So so she, he's um, or oh, turmoil. Um, and he so he doesn't want to you know go through that. But this episode does a good job, I think, of just like showing how like they're they're starting to connect a little bit more. Um, and of course it ends with them being held at gunpoint. Man, I, I, I was on the edge of my seat for this whole episode, more or less, you know, in terms of like, just like absorbing in the story. And then when it finally ended, I was like, Oh damn, dude, like that's a bummer. <laughs> like, I, I wish there was a little bit more to this, but overall, I think it's a really good story. It sets up uh, this Kathleen character who seems to be the leader of all these Raiders. And she is pretty cold. Like, um, you know, she kills a doctor, which arguably you would probably need in this world where, like, there isn't, there are no more hospitals, and doctors are not exactly being coming out of med school anywhere. So it's it's just basically whoever's left that's you know that can be a doctor or was a doctor, right? So the fact that she's willing to kill a person that's like really crucial to their own survival speaks a lot, you know, and, and she does it with very little or to no hesitation at the end. Cause, um, you know, he, cause she just tells the guy to open the, the cell door and just pow, you know, gone. <laughs> and that was it. Um, I kind of like the dynamic that they're setting up for this too. Cause like, you know, this Kathleen lady is, is trying to hunt Henry or like some guy named Henry, um, down because they were part of Fedra or like at least they ratted a lot of people out to Fedra and then they believe Joel is part of you know with Henry or something like our part of Fedra maybe you know or is you know sympathetic to whoever this other faction is even though he was just trying to get through the town and it just happened to kill people who were trying to kill him right like it was just self-defense arguably at the end of the day and um uh so like you kind of have this cat and mouse game but uh you have like three different parties going after one another i'll bet the last party is just like dude we're just 
trying to get through this and get, you know, and get a, like through this city. Like, we're not here to take your stuff. We have our own stuff. We just want to get the crap through this, which I was kind of like, you know, you would think after they searched through the truck that Ellie and Joel had to leave behind, they should have looked at it and be like, you know, because like they were kind of um, hypothesizing like, OK, who are these people? Are they like allies of the of our enemy? So, you know, are they back up? But they should look at the stuff and be like, all right, we have guns. Obviously, we have toilet paper. We have food. We have stuff that where it's like these people, like if they were just like, you know, reinforcements of in order to back up this Henry guy or whatever his name was. You know, they would probably only bring two things, guns, people, and food, right? Like, those are like probably the three things that they're going to come in with. And if they have one truck with just some guns, food, clothing, and stuff, it's like, it's probably not them, right? Like, you know, they're, they're, they're set up in a way with camping gear and all that jazz. Like, they're probably set up in a way it's like, okay, these guys are clearly just like people who roam around or traveling. And... um you know, they're they're not as a big of a threat as her main threat. Speaking of the main threat, there's also at one point some foreshadowing of something happening in the ground, right? Like, um, I think I've I've seen other YouTubers they're surmising to be a bloater or um whatever the the, the last like evolution of the infected is, is which is where you have a giant like hu- like a human with like all the fungus that's basically covered every last um, square inch of their body and um they're also huge and they're like i think they're super hard to kill because the fungus has hardened as well so it forms like a carapace on them and it's apparently i i think it looks like it's coming out of the ground because the ground was kind of pulsing a little bit and i thought it was like you know of, of course like the second the kathleen's like no we'll deal with it later don't tell anybody like she's so focused on this one Henry guy. It's like, it's kind of like, okay, like I get it. Like you hate this person and you don't, and you want to make sure that this person doesn't come back because you want to look out for like the well being of your people or whatever. But you guys have a common enemy and that's the infected, which is coming through the ground. Like that should be your number one priority. Like, you know, even though you can't, send the message to this Henry dude or person, you know, or like talk to them and like negotiate, you should be focused on the bigger threat, which I'm guessing is going to end in some kind of crazy climax where, you know, not only is going to be that bloated, you know, uh, the bloater, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's the name, the big, you know, the big bad at the end, but it's probably going to bring with it a ton of infected. And it's just going to get a crap ton of people killed. You know, and, and, but, you know, when sometimes people are so driven by these like revenge stories and like their emotion, they can't see five feet past in front of them. You know, they're just like, they're so focused on that one thing. So I'm very curious to what's going to happen next week. And actually this episode, next episode is going to be released on Friday and not Sunday because of the Super Bowl. So, um, the next last of us episode will be out early and i can't wait for it so i'm super excited (coughs) sorry guys for that and i think it's going to be a really good one so anyways i think that's all for me today um i don't really have much else to say because i I can't compare it to the game because i don't know what's happening um because again i've never played the game but so far it's really great story really good um, series and it's really intriguing. A lot of people are like, "Oh, isn't this just like Walking Dead?" I'm like, "Sure, it is." Like, there's a ton of post-apocalyptic zombie stories, but this is—I feel like it is a little different, right? It's a fungus that makes people these, um, you know, zombie things. But it's also they—they don't—they don't infect dead people. Whereas, like in Walking Dead, like you have to die to be reanimated, and so if you just die normally, you could be in re re um reanimated because everyone has the virus or whatever. So I feel like this is a little different, right? There's a little bit more to this story. Um and there's like, you know, the characters is about what we, what we really like it. It's like you know, 
at the end of the day, it's all about the characters, you know, like the story itself. Yeah, it can I mean, or like the the background and the setting itself, it can be a little stale. Like it's kind of been done like a million times, but the characters are who we care about. And these are great characters. So, anyways, that's my take on it for today for episode four. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments. Like, you know, subscribe and all that jazz. All right, guys, take it easy. <laughs>